our man, Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake. Let's give her a book of two <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you very much for your hospitality and thank you for giving uh, me your attention. Uh, I'm not going to talk very long. I'd love to hear from you. I am here and I've been at uh, other schools and we're ta I've been talking about the importance of coming to school every day on time and why that's so important. Every single day when you're here and you're in school, you're working towards your goal of reaching your truest and best potential, whatever you want to be. Whatever you want to be, the only way you're going to get it is by staying on course. No good comes um, from being off task, you know, not being in school, not, not working hard. I talked to some high schoolers just a little while ago about something I call, that's called unforced errors. They have it in baseball, they have it in tennis, and it's when you, you, know, when you have an opportunity to get it right and you mess it up. And that's what I think about when I think about uh, not coming to school and not really being a part of, uh, b being a partner uh, and making sure that you have the progress that you want to see. Can anybody tell me a good reason to come to school every day? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so you can learn more. Yes, that's an excellent reason. Anybody? Yes. Definitely. Yes. 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 Definitely. Do you know what college you want to go to? Not yet. No ideas? Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? What? A singer. Oh, wonderful. Very, very nice. You know, we have a lot of famous singers, that, a lot of people with a lot of talent that are from Baltimore. Good. Yes, sir. That's wonderful. My parents went to Morgan. I'm a product of Morgan. They met in math class. So, anyway, uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, to make sure that you understand this is the beginning of a new school year. You have an opportunity every, just like every new year, January 1st, you have a chance to start a new, every school year, uh, you have a chance to start a new and to make, uh, regardless of what has happened, you know, whether you were the best student in the world or whether, and you want to continue it, or you had some challenges and really didn't take it seriously, every new uh, start of the school year is your chance to wipe the slate clean and start fresh. And be the and be the student and the person that you know uh, that you can be. So why do you think we want you? I want you uh, to be in school and not, um, you know, somewhere somewhere else. You know, out on the out on the street being uh, unsupervised during the school day. Give me one good reason why you think I might care about that. Yes, sir. Because you could get locked up. Why would you get locked up? Because you couldn't. You mean. You hook in school, and also you could have done something. Mm-hmm. Any other reason why I think it's important for you to be in school? Any? Yes, ma'am. Because the more kids that stay in school, they grow up to be something good in life instead of making Baltimore a bad place. Yeah, you got it. And before you don't lose your train of thought, I'm going to come right to you. But you know, the thing that I want you to understand is uh, I'm here. Your teachers are here. Your administrators are here. All the the people in your life that care about you. We know how important it is because you're the future of our city. You know, the direction of Baltimore, it depends on each and every one of you. We rise and fall. Baltimore rises and fall together. We don't have, you know, a spare class. We can't say, okay, we're going to forget about that class of Booker T. Washington and focus on another class. We can't do that. Each and every one of you. We need each and every one of you to make sure that you're great so we can continue to be great as a city. So that's why. Uh, we think, I think, is so important to make sure that you're in school. All right. What was your answer for me? Stay out of I know. And that's important. You know, sometimes, you know, you can find trouble. Sometimes you can make trouble or sometimes, um, you know, sometimes you can find trouble and sometimes it'll find you based on where you are. And if you're in school uh, where you should be, uh, you'll be out of harm's way. And that, I know, is very, very uh, important. So. Who else knows what they want? I know we have a singer and we have a choreographer, correct? Did I get it right? Who else knows what they want to be when they grow up? Uh, you, you already asked one, so don't forget. I might come back to you. Yes, ma'am. An artist. What type of artist? Sculptor. Yeah, you know we have a great school, uh, the uh, Maryland Institute College of Art right here in Baltimore. That is a, a great school for artists and sculptors. Yes, back here, gentlemen. Yes? I want to be a scientist. 
a forensic scientist? Yes. That's not too gross for you? Huh? That's not too gross for you? No. All that uh, CSI stuff, very interesting. Science is a, is a very, very important, and to use science in a way that uh, you know, has real life uh, implications, very smart. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd like to be a marine biologist. Oh, that's fantastic. What, do you, what interests you uh, about uh, marine biology? A dolphin trainer. Hmm. Very nice. You want to learn to talk to the dolphins? <laughs> yes, ma'am, in the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I was in, uh, we, we need more famous women basketball players from, from Baltimore. Uh, and and we've, I was with uh, Sam Cassell that graduated from Dunbar and uh, Will Barton who graduated from uh, Lake Clifton yesterday. So I, I want to stand at a, at, a, at a new basketball court with some women basketball players. So that would be good. Yes, ma'am. Great, 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 great. So there are lots of opportunities, high schools that can link up that interest and make sure that you stay on track. What do you think we can do the adults in your life can do to help make sure that you are in school on time every day so you can learn. <coughs> yes, sir. Check on, check, on, check on you during the day. Yes, we can do that. But what, what about to make sure that you, you, you're here every day? Yes, sir. Yes, that's something that we do. Yes. To make sure you hit transportation. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have transportation and you have a problem getting to school on time, what do you do? And other, mm -hmm, and other services. Anybody else have some ideas that would help to make sure that you are in school every day? Yes, sir. <coughs> now you know you can talk louder than that. Yeah, that's true. Anything else? Nothing. All right, well, I'm talking about making sure that everybody's on school, at school on time, and coming to school every day. I've, I've, I think we've, we touched on a lot of good subjects. Anybody have any questions for me? Yes, sir. How did you become a... So I started um, my interest in uh, government and representing people when I was in middle school. So when I, w I first was, well actually that's not true, before that. My dad was in the legislature in the House of Delegates in Annapolis while I was growing up. And he gave me uh, interest in public service, helping my community. And it gave me also a desire to be a representative, to be a voice for um, for the people and I started when I was in middle school and I ran for I think it was vice president of my uh, seventh grade class and I lost to Anthony Watson and that's your name <laughs> <laughs> so I lost to Anthony Watson and that was hopefully my first and last loss but I didn't give up because I was uh, very interested in being a voice for um, you know for, for my peers just like when I was I just was at a high school and the young people were talking about the different after-school clubs that they wanted to participate in they said if they had more activities that really spoke to them that they were really interested in they'd be more interested in, in coming to school that's the kind of thing I was interested in doing so I started there and I was uh, in student government when I was in um, middle school and high school and college and I went to law school in Baltimore and after I graduated from law school I uh, ran for city council and I just moved up from there. I've always had an interest in serving my city. I love Baltimore and I want to make sure that I do my part, use all of the skills and the talents that I have to make it as, as great a city as possible. All right, you have another question? Mm -hmm. I think about that um, every once in a while. They ask me that, and you know, sometimes I know that I have a desire to serve. And uh, while I was on a city council, I worked as a public defender, an attorney. I'm an attorney as well, and I represented people who could not afford to pay for a private attorney, and some people that were having some real tough times. And I, um, in in my work on the city council, I met an organization called the Center for Urban Families. 
that gives support to families that are in crisis and, and individuals who have had difficulty, whether it's with past criminal uh, behavior or um, drug addiction, and helps them get the support that they need to get their lives back on track so they can make a way for themselves and for their family. And um, they do a lot of good work. And that seems like the type of the type of organization that if I wasn't mayor, that I know if I was there, I would be making an impact and making a difference in the world. Yes, sir. How does it feel to give back to your community? It's hard to describe what a great feeling it is. You know, I, um, you know, sometimes I have, I have a bunch of different friends that do a whole bunch of different things, and a lot of them that went to law school with me went to law school because you know they. Everybody is searching for their uh, th their meaning of success, and for a lot of my peers, that means you know the biggest job and a, a lot of money. And a lot of them are doing very, very well on that end. And some of them say, you know, why the he why would you why would you choose public service? Because you're certainly not going to be rich being a city council person or uh, being mayor. And I talk about you know, I would feel for me being having a life that has meaning and purpose means that I've done something that outlives me, that I have a, that I have an impact, a lasting uh, positive impact on the community and the, the city that I care about. And um, it's very fulfilling to me when, when I was, um, you know, worked very hard and fought very hard for the money that we were able to get from the legislature for school construction. It's, it was a feeling like no other to know that uh, for generations to come, young people like you will have the opportunity to be in new schools and fully renovated schools and to be able to be excited uh, about school and, and what that means for them and to, to have the, the feeling that their value uh, because they're, they're going into a school that's not dilapidated and, and is as great as the kids that we have going to them you know, that was uh, a feeling of satisfaction like no other because I know, you know, I could close my eyes and not wake up tomorrow and that impact will be there for generations. And that's a good feeling um, because I think Baltimore is a great city with a great history. But when I think about what's possible for our future, I know that the sky's the limit and I'm just real lucky to be a part of helping us uh, get to that place. Yes. Hmm? Only when the press are asking me questions. That's when it's, too, no, just joking. No, I, I mean, it's a challenging job, but I'm not doing it by myself. You know, I have a great team of people uh, that work for me in the administration, and they're all equally committed uh, to making sure Baltimore is the best it could be. So yes, it's a, it's a tough job, but there are a lot of opportunities. So that's what I, I like to focus on. Yes, and then I'm going to go in the back. It's a good feeling. You know, sometimes it's, it's hard um, because you can feel like every problem is, is your fault and everything that, and, that goes well is, is, you know, somebody else is responsible for, you know, that you get all the problems and, you know, nobody, sometimes it feels like nobody notices when you're doing good things. It's probably like being a young person, you know, you feel like only time adults pay attention is when you're doing something wrong, right? And when you're doing things well, nobody seems to care. Um, it's, some, it's sometimes like that, um, but uh, that I try not to dwell on that part and really focus on all the good opportunities. You know, I, I remember the, the people when I was growing up that cared about me, that mentored uh, me and helped me believe in myself. And you know, I try to focus on those type of opportunities to, to give back, to make sure that the next generation of superstars in Baltimore hear from me how important you are. All right, in the back. Um, would you like to be again down the line? Yeah, I would love to. I got a lot more work to do. And I, and I would like to continue to, to be able to make Baltimore great. Yes, ma'am. So, when did you first start being there? Uh, December, uh, February the 4th, 2010. The day before Snowmageddon. Do y'all remember that? No. Y'all don't remember Snowmageddon when no. the snow when we were stuck in the house for two weeks? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. All right, back here, and then I'll come up to you. Back here on the right. Um, you, the f terms are normally four years. This time, my term is five years because the state legislature wanted the Baltimore City elections to be, um, didn't want us to have off-year elections anymore, meaning they want one year to be uh, the state elections, you know, the governor and the state delegates and senators, then a break, and then the next year to be the presidential and the local elections instead of, you know, having elections three years in a row. So this one time, it'll be a five-year term, and then it'll be every four years. Um, but um, unlike many cities, uh, Baltimore doesn't have a term limit. So as long as, you know, the, the, the voters and I are in agreement, I can, I can be mayor. Did you already ask one? No? All right, go ahead. Do you want to become president? Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I think, I mean, I'll say this. I, when I, that, that answer is based on how difficult it is for the president to get stuff done now uh, in the Congress. I like to be a part of government that actually is getting stuff done on a daily basis. You know, I have a good relationship with the city council and they and at the city level we can't pass the buck. You know, we we have to balance a budget every year. We have to get stuff done as the uh, president of the country, of the country is sometimes it can be a gridlock and make it very very difficult for you to do what you need to do. So I, well, I think there'll be a woman president before me. Before well, I think so. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah, my dad was uh, in the House of Delegates growing up. Uh, he first got in the legislature while I was still in elementary school. Mm -hmm. One more question. Someone who has an ants, you can ask. How much money do you need a year? <laughs> I, the, the, the salary for the mayor is public information. I believe, and I'm going to guess, um, I think it's somewhere like 155, somewhere around there. Yeah. I think, I think, does that sound right? <laughs> around there. You said 1000 Uh, 155000 All right. Alrighty, I can't thank you enough for giving me your uh, attention. And I hope uh, that you have the best year ever and know that if you do or don't, it is up to you. And we are looking at you, we are depending on you as a future of Baltimore. All right? Maybe? All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.